Hello and welcome, I'm your Kudmaki. So here's a video on an extremely important topic, basically how to learn things and specifically how to manage time. A lot of people want to learn a lot of things, but trying to find the time to actually learn that can be quite tricky. So over here, John asks, good day. I'm hoping to seek some advice in order to gain some idea on how to work on my time management. So I'm currently a student finishing high school in order to get into a university, but I don't have any plans on going into a coding or game development courses. Instead, I plan to go for healthcare, but I would like to keep my game development journey as a hobby. Which, by the way, I would say that's an excellent thing. A lot of people feel like the only way to do game dev is basically as a job, basically as something where you have to make a living. And I understand that. It can definitely be fun. I mean, this is what I've been doing for a long time. I've been making a living as a game developer for over a decade at this point. I talked about my strategies for surviving for the long term in this video. But it's also very important to know how you can make games for fun. Sometimes if you look on YouTube on something related to game dev, it seems like everything is related to learn marketing, get sales, get wishlists, get success. Which again is awesome, but just remember that it's not the only way. You can definitely do it like this student was saying, which is how you can go to university, you can try to get a job on something completely different, and then just do game development basically as a hobby. So always remember, that's an option. So anyways, continuing, how would you be able to manage time for both learning and expanding your knowledge with game development while being in school for a different genre course? Also work as a care aide for elderly folks? That's awesome, that's nice. I know you made a video not too long ago about how it takes 60 days to learn something, this was another interesting video that I made, 60 days to achieve your goals. And this video is indeed about all kinds of things you can do in just 60 days. So this one over here, this was posted back in November 24. So just 60 days before the end of the year. And over here, I basically talked about how in those 60 days, you can learn quite a lot of stuff. Even if you work just one hour per day, one hour per day equals 60 hours. In 60 hours, you can learn quite a lot. So the student over here referencing that and saying, but how exactly do you work on it? So for example, you manage, you don't like to get into the voxel topic. And that's awesome, that's definitely a topic that I would love to research at some point. I think voxel games are really awesome. Obviously, you've got Minecraft, but something like Teardown, this is just so insanely impressive. I definitely would love to work on a game kind of like this. And normally, I would say something like this, this extreme, would probably require a custom engine. But now that Unity has DOTS, which is literally capable of getting 200 x speedups, I think using DOTS and some very clever stuff, you could build something like Teardown directly inside Unity. So yeah, voxels, awesome topic. Again, that is something that if you have 60 days to work on, you can definitely learn quite a lot on that topic. Then continuing, so one that piqued my interest is Sandbox, which again, another awesome thing. Unsure really where to begin. Also, how long would you suggest to learn certain topics? I'm trying to actually learn your C-Sharp beginner free course by YouTube. Up to your advice on how to manage time. Thanks for the free course by YouTube. So again, so this is basically someone who really wants to learn, but of course they're seeing how life is going to be very tricky to find time to learn. If you've got a day job, that is going to occupy at the very least eight hours of your day. If you include commutes and whatnot and other various things, it's probably going to cost like 10, 11 hours per day. So doing it like that, it's definitely very tricky to come up with even just one to two hours at the end of the day. So my answer here is how the answer is going to depend a lot on your specific circumstances. So the best general advice I can give you is to try to do something every single day or as often as possible, as opposed to, for example, just on weekends. Personally, I find that spending one hour per day learning something is much more efficient than seven hours in a single day. And if I definitely do believe that, if you learn just, let's say, one hour every single day, that will definitely stick in your mind quite a lot more as opposed to trying to cram seven hours worth of knowledge in just your weekends. I definitely experienced that when I was a student, where it was much easier to just keep up with the material that they were teaching day by day, as opposed to trying to cram it all in before a test. So if this would be my advice, find a small chunk of time every single day to do it consistently, as opposed to trying to cram it all in just on the weekends. So for here, so depending on what your schedule looks like, I'll try to do that. Try to find 30 minutes to one hour every single day or every two days in order to focus on your goals outside of your job. Maybe you can find some time right in the morning, maybe during lunch or maybe at night. Experiment with different schedules to find out what works for you. And if I would say this is another great tip, which is how some people, when they hear about doing game dev on the side, they pretty much always default to, okay, so that means weekends and nights. But again, depending on your schedule, that might not necessarily be your only option. If you start work, let's say at 9 a.m., there's nothing stopping you from waking up at 6 a.m., doing your nice morning routine, then having at least one hour to two hours of solid game dev work before going on to your actual job. Now again, all these tips that I'm giving you, these are all very specific to your specific scenario. On some jobs, it would be nearly impossible to basically get tired before work and then try to go to work. But another alternative would be lunchtime. If you've got a schedule that has, let's say, one hour for lunchtime, maybe you can basically eat at your PC whilst doing something outside of work. But the key point here is what I said, experiment. So experiment with different schedules to find out what works for you. That is pretty much always going to be my favorite general advice that applies to literally everyone, which is how everyone is going to be different. So the only way to figure out what works for you specifically is basically try out lots of things and see what works. Like for me personally, back when I was making my games, I definitely experimented with tons of different schedules. I do remember how I tried to force myself to work just at night. So basically starting work at like 10 p.m. and trying to work until 5 a.m. I tried that for a few weeks, something like that. And then I realized, no, it does not work. My brain does not work like that. After like 6 p.m., my brain pretty much just starts shutting down. 
I can't really do any cognitive demanding tasks after 6 p.m. So after that experiment, that didn't really work. After that, I tried what is my current schedule, which is work basically in the morning. So every single day I wake up around 6 a.m. and I start working right away. And I find that from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., which is when I go to the gym, those two hours are insanely productive. So yeah, definitely experiment with different schedules in order to find out what works for you specifically. Anyways, continuing. So for learning things, personally, I like to first watch a ton of videos on that topic. Maybe also read some documentation and blog posts. And then the very important step of opening up an empty project and start writing some code. And if this is indeed how I learn pretty much anything, it's probably no surprise that the fact that I make videos is because I also like learning through videos. And my first step for learning anything is literally go on YouTube, find video tutorials, then go read some documentation, maybe read the official manual, something like that. And then again, the very important thing that I said here, so the very important step of opening up an empty project and start writing some code. Always remember how you only learn by doing. You don't learn just by blindly watching tutorials, that doesn't work. You've got to watch some tutorial, gain that knowledge, and then apply that knowledge. That is the only way that you actually solidify that you are learning what you are actually trying to learn. So for example, in terms of voxels, I would find YouTube tutorials on that topic. There's loads on them. Then I would start implementing it in an empty project. So make just a single cube in the world, then try to multiplying it by a thousand in order to see what are the main performance issues, then fix those, then figure out how to manipulate the world by removing or adding voxels and so on and on. And yep, this would definitely be my step-by-step -step process for researching this particular topic and really any topic. So first go on YouTube and type Unity Voxel Tutorial. And if there you go, lots of videos right away. So I would watch a handful of these in order to get a rough idea of how exactly voxels work. Then very important step. So open a new project, then make a single cube, multiply it by a thousand, trying to see the performance issues and so on. Then continuing, if you're following along the C-sharp course, then you have to do exactly that. So watch a lecture, then open it in empty C-sharp project and write some code. Do that after every single lecture to really ensure you're learning every individual topic. If you do that, you will have gained a ton of knowledge by the end. And if this is absolutely still my advice, so watch every single lecture and importantly, go apply in order to make sure you're actually learning. That is the big reason why in the premium version of my c -sharp course over here, one very crucial thing that I made were the interactive exercises in the companion project. These are exercises that in order to complete them, you need to actually apply the knowledge that you are gaining in each lecture. In order to successfully go through those, you need to validate that. And if you do that, if you put into practice what you're actually learning, that's how you can be sure that you are definitely gaining that knowledge. So if this definitely is a very important topic, time management, it's definitely tricky to make game dev or really learn anything, especially if you have a full-time job, you only have a handful of hours. So you definitely have to be very careful with how you decide to spend those hours. And my tips that I give over here are pretty much the best tips I can give you. So try to find a short amount of time every single day, experiment with different schedules to find out what works for you. And for learning things, you can try to follow my method or whatever works for you. Again, that's always the thing. Learning is a very personal thing. So experiment with all kinds of methods, figure out what works for you, and then really just apply that. Go learn some things, go apply what you're learning. And if you do that, you will gain a ton of knowledge. Did you hear the story on how the game about digging a hole actually made millions of dollars? Or do you know how much is a Steam Daily deal worth and how you might get one? Did you hear about the problem of making more money with assets and games? Or have you done this extremely important exercise? Those are all things that I covered in my Game Dev Report newsletter. It's what I write every single Sunday with any weekly Game Dev news and some interesting articles that I come across every week. Sign up for free with the link in the description. Alright, so best of luck in your learning journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.